my name is Teodora Ivanova. I'm the Deputy Secretary General of the Italian Chamber of Commerce in Bulgaria, and I'm pleased to present today's scientific webinar entitled How the Immune System Responds to SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes the COVID-19, the best reaction for keeping healthy and safe workplaces, which was organized in collaboration with our member and partner, Love Consult. The special guest of the event today is PhD Alba Grifoni, an Italian researcher and winner of the Embassy of Italy Award to honor young Italian researchers for research in COVID-19 from the Italian Science and Scholars in North America Foundation, who works in La Jolla Institute for Immunology in San Diego, and who was previously spent a training period in Bulgaria. Her passion and deep knowledge of viral immunity has led to pioneering findings in the context of COVID-19 research. Her first author paper focused on the TCOs in COVID-19 patients was mentioned by Dr. Fauci during a Congress meeting and was critical in COVID-19 vaccine research. From this moment, the Q&A session will be active and I would like to inform you that we have the live streaming on Facebook and we're recording this event. Before listening, listening to Ms. Mrs. Griffoni, who will illustrate the re results of her research regarding vaccines, I leave the floor to the Secretary General of the Italian Chamber of Commerce in Bulgaria, Mrs. Rosa Cusmano. Please, Rosa. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot. Theodora, for, uh, for your introduction. Um, I would like to, uh, to thank, first of all, Mrs. Grifoni, our special guest today. Uh, it's, not, it's not easy for her. I mean, it's not easy because of the time. We are now connecting Bulgaria, Italy, and uh, US, particularly San Diego, where Alba is there, is working at the, 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 the Hola Institute of Immunology. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm really glad to have, uh, to have her today with us. Um, before giving a few, few words about, uh, about the, the, the scope and the, the objective of the webinar, uh, let me just uh, pass the greetings of our chairman of the Italian Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Marco Montecchi, who will, uh, uh, I think, and I suppose to join, to join the webinar later, um, because it's strongly important to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to keep, uh, to keep, to, to keep being informed about what's going on uh, nowadays. Everybody is living, I mean, the, the health emergency. Uh, it's a hard, hot topic, as we used to say, uh, but it's something that we have to be much more uh, focused on and uh, be uh, informed, particularly in the business side. I have the pleasure to have many of you today connecting from Italy and from Bulgaria as well. Uh, and I really thank you for your time. Um, we are trying to, um, I mean, with Alba and with our friend Maria from Lot Consult, um, to, to give you updated information and not just updating information. We are not, we are not giving miracles. We are not giving solution. We want with this webinar today just to inform you and about how to do business, how to continue doing business in Bulgaria, in Italy, worldwide, in a safe and secure uh, manner. Uh, I, uh, I wish you good, uh, good luck and buon lavoro, Alba. Uh, I'm really proud and I really thank you so much as well, the support of our Italian Embassy in Sofia. Uh, Mr. The Councillor Francesco Calderoli, the Deputy Ambassador of Italy, is now today with us, and I, really, I give you the floor to, to Mrs. Cal Mr. Calderoli. Buon lavoro a tutti and thanks a lot. Thank you, Alba. Thank you, Maria. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Rosa. And uh, good morning. Uh, I mean, good evening and good morning, everybody. It depends on the on the time zone. Uh, so. First of all, thank you, Rosa, and thank you to your staff, uh, Theodora, and all the staff of the Chamber of Commerce uh, for organizing this uh, webinar. It's part of a series of webinars that you are going to have been uh, organizing for the whole of this year. Uh, so, I mean, not even the COVID uh, can stop the, the <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. And that is really good, not really. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Mrs. Grifoni Alba, uh, for taking part to this, uh, to this uh, webinar uh, to Bulgaria. I'm glad to hear that you have a special link uh, uh, to Bulgaria, so the perfect representative for uh, for this kind of event. And uh, just uh, 
two words from uh, from our side. Uh, I think this is really a central issue because since the beginning of the COVID-19 emergency, our first challenge has been how we can keep the embassy open. I mean, how we can still do our job, do our business, uh, I mean, assisting Italian people, Italian enterprises and everything. But if we cannot work in a safe uh, workplace, everything is, I mean, we have to close. So I think this is a really central issue. And uh, also with the bus sign and everything, yes, of course, we are, we are going better and we, are, uh, we can start to think again about uh, going back to normality, but it will take time. It will, it will still take time. So it's really important uh, that we all uh, have the best information we can in order to uh, improve the condition of, uh, of uh, safety in our workplace, in order to be able to still do our business. So I'm really glad to be part of this uh, webinar and I'm really also curious to, to listen what, uh, what will be told by, by our panelists. So thank you again and uh, good luck, good job. Buon lavoro a tutti, grazie. Thank you, Mr. Calderoli. And now we are glad to listen to our keynote speaker, PhD Alba Glifoni. Thank you, Alba. Enjoy the presentation. Thank you very much, Teodora. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity to actually present my work in Bulgaria. And yes, indeed, I have a fantastic connection and fantastic uh, experience work-wise and not only here in Bulgaria. And um, talking about COVID, the many of us has been seeing the COVID-19 situation from different angle. Uh, what I'm gonna try to do today in simple words as much as possible is to try to make you understand how our immune system is fighting COVID. So what happens if we get the infection or why we get uh, severe disease or why we don't and why it's important getting vaccinated. So uh, bear with me, let's see if everything works. It does. So um, when we talk about immune response against COVID, what we are talking about is uh, the teamwork of different components of our immune response. The first one that maybe is the one that you're more familiar with, you heard a lot, is the antibody response. So what the antibody do, they're able to recognize the virus outside and prevent him to infect our cells. So having an antibody response is critical and very important, particularly in a vaccination, because it should prevent the infection. But despite the fact the antibody response is an efficient response, the virus sometimes infects still the cells. So what happened there? The problem when uh, the virus infects the cells is the antibody don't see it anymore. This is why there are other components of our immune system that actually uh, play a different role in trying to figure out what is infected and kill it. So these are the T cells and there are two types of T cells. The first one, as I said, so are killer T cells. So they are able to understand if a cell is infected see the virus and say, okay, we need to kill the cells and we need to prevent this virus to hide inside the cell. There is another component of the T cells, which are called helper T cells. So this uh, component helps understanding and coordinating the immune system. So you need to think about the immune system as a teamwork. The helper T cells are the ones that understand what's going on and are the ones that coordinate the response the quality, the quantity, and so forth. The antibody are the one that try to block the virus before it infects more cells, and the killer T cells are the one that in case the antibody don't manage, they're able to kill the cells infected and therefore preventing uh, the spreading of the virus, therefore disease severity. Now, when we talk about SARS-CoV-2, the virus, in reality, we're talking of a virus that is composed by different components. You need to think about it like a house that has uh, windows, uh, but also has a lot of furniture component inside. And in particularly, when we look at the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the most uh, external protein that is in the virus is called the spike protein. This is a protein that is very important for antibody response and is also the reason why it's used in all the vaccination currently available. However, the virus is also composed by other proteins such as the membrane, the nucleocapsid, and we also have the genome inside. 
So the antibody recognize only the external side of it. This is why we focus only on the spike protein. But the T cells instead, they have the possibility to recognize all the components of the virus. Because once the virus is infected inside, pieces of their protein are chopped and shown to the T cells. Therefore, uh, the question that we were trying to address during our study is how can we reduce the complexity of the virus in something that we can easily analyze? So this is an approach that we develop uh, in uh, our laboratory, it's called a megapool approach. And uh, the point of this reagent is exactly to reduce the complexity in something simple you can use to actually uh, understand how our T cell responds to the virus. And uh, because of the emergency of COVID, uh, we uh, try to share these mega pools worldwide. Right now we share freely and they are available for up to 100 laboratories spread all over the world. Six of them in Italy and one, uh, of course, in Bulgaria that we have a collaboration ongoing in the National Center of Infection and Parasitic Disease with Dr. Nikolova. So the question is, now that I explain you a little bit the three components that are important in our immune response, what are the response? So the antibody response here I'm showing you in gray, people that have never seen the virus, and in red, people that actually experience COVID-19. And you do see that these two are actually pretty different with each other. Therefore, we have a very strong response in terms of antibody. The same we see in terms of killer, T cells, and the same we see in terms of helper T cells. So the three components respond strongly uh, against the virus uh, in a very nice way. When we did this study though, what we decided to study initially were people that have experienced COVID, but in a mild or asymptomatic form. Why? Because the majority of the people that get this virus, actually they do not develop uh, severe disease. So this is uh, the type of response that protects you from disease severity and the type of response that you also want to achieve when you, you want to design an uh, efficient vaccine. And uh, this type of study that we did was actually performed in May 2020, and it was one of the first that studied these three components together, which is why that drag the attention of Dr. Fauci that mentioned our uh, paper uh, during a Congress um, Hearings. And uh, behind uh, the fantastic uh, thing of having Dr. Fauci presenting our work, the readout of this was that finally the scientific community was starting to understand that the three components, particularly with this virus, were important. And therefore, all the studies that uh, have been done on vaccination after this study now study the three components. So this is why our initial study was a breakthrough and uh, is uh, mentioned all over the world. This is the reason. Now, um, up to now, I've been talking about what happened in an asymptomatic infection. What happened if we compare someone that have like a mild form of the disease with someone that instead of severe disease? So this uh, we did uh, in a different study. And what we saw, just to summarize, is that if you have the three components responding strongly, you are good to go. You have mild disease uh, and you are asymptomatic. But if you miss one of the three, then that's where the disease severity, uh, it's more likely to happen. And that also is exacerbated by an uh, increase of age. So when uh, we discuss about the guidelines about vaccination, the reason why uh, behind the medical personnel, the first class of people that are vaccinated are older people, that is because they're most susceptible to disease severity, which is the thing that you want to avoid because uh, it causes people to go to the hospital and is the, the reason why we're also scared about COVID-19 because you can risk uh, to die if you have disease severity. And uh, in terms of the response up to now, I was just showing you the fact that T cell responds strongly. And up to now, we were discussing the fact that the spike protein is very important in vaccination. So the first question that we wanted to understand is, do we see T cell response against the spike? And yes, we do, and very strongly. Is this the only protein for which uh, we are able to detect response? Not really. And in fact, our T cell response can recognize multiple protein of the virus. 
So why this is important? Uh, there has been a lot of discussion about the fact that there are variants in surging and uh, there is a lot of concern. So up to now, the data do not show a difference with the variants. However, we already have additional protein targets that we can use in second vaccine generation. So we are ready. We know way more than we did when this epidemic start, and we are ready already to uh, take measurement to prevent this issue. One of the questions, though, that uh, is related to what I show you is, uh, OK, before you show me that uh, people respond spike and there are other proteins, but how many proteins a single individual recognized? Why did we ask this question? So if I design a vaccine that contains behind the spike protein other proteins, is my donor able to respond to this or in general, the population respond to everything? So we did the study. Uh, the study was done with more than 100 people, and we were happy to see that each uh, component of the immune response, whether they're helper or killer, recognize at, at least three proteins. So this piece of data with the data that I presented you before uh, proved the point that indeed, if we want to use other protein as vaccine candidates in the future, we can. So what are the take home messages of what I wanted to show you today? Even if for now I just show you how the immune system responds to the virus, this research is really relevant for vaccination because all the components that I show you today are actually shown in the vaccine trials of the vaccine that have been validated. So for all the vaccine we have now currently circulating, we do have a strong antibody response, we do have a strong helper and killer T cell response. And these three components work together as a team to actually fight against this virus. The other component that is still relevant for vaccination is that when we look at the entire uh, proteins of our virus, we see that behind the spike that is already contained in this vaccination, we do have other proteins that we can use if the need arises to have second vaccine generation. And finally, uh, the work that we have been doing has been aimed to actually connect as much as possible scientists against the entire world. Why? We could have not reached the point we are right now without having the support and the help of scientists worldwide. If we were able to uh, manage to get so many vaccines available ready and so many information is because there has been heavily collaboration. So our reagent in one sense has been catalyst for this global research because right now everybody or up to 100 lab uh, worldwide are using the same way to measure T cell response. So that would also give us future information if we see difference in the different countries and uh, other kind of questions that we're not ready to answer as yet. So with that one, I would like to acknowledge the people that have been behind the work that I show you. I've been showing you in summary the results of uh, up to seven different manuscripts that have been publishing throughout the last years in very prestigious journal. The group uh, and the main core of the results have been done uh, in the laboratory of Alessandro Sette, Daniela Wescov, and Shane Crotti. And there is a huge team behind it that unfortunately I'm not going to have time to thank today. Uh, but still, I would like to acknowledge uh, all the team in the La Jolla Institute for Immunology and our collaborators in UCSD San Diego in Italy and particularly today in the National Center of Infection and Parasitic Disease here in Sofia. So I want to thank you again for everything and Blagodaria Tim Nogo. I speak a little bit of Bulgarian and I apologize if my presentation was in English, but with that, I, I'm happy to take any question and thank you very much for being connected with us today. Thank you very much, Alba, for the interesting topic presentation. And now, yes, we have time for questions, if you have the questions. Can I, can I ask something to Alba, <laughs> even if I'm a panelist? I just, I just would want, to, want to know that you experienced a lot the, the US and as well as the other countries, so your professional CV is quite huge. What about your back, your return into our country in Italy? 
how, how you are, I mean, I, you, I suppose you are cooperating with our institute and with our university as well, uh, and centers concerning disease and, uh, and the vaccine and on. Are you expecting to come back in Italy? Absolutely. Yes, of course, we keep the collaboration going. And I guess right now, what has always driven my steps is the love for my science and the type of research I'm doing. So as of right now, I didn't have possibility to come back in my country because the opportunity was not there. But I don't exclude that. Let's see where uh, the next uh, years will bring me. In any case, I'm going to still uh, be here talking to you about T cells for that one, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, concerning um, another question that comes to my mind is connected to uh, as per our title. I mean, we were speaking about the best reaction for keeping health and safe play workplaces. So you are recommending, I think that the, 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 your question is quite right, it's quite fair, but are you recommending vaccination at this time, considering one, one year and a half, let's say with all this uh, in a way, on one side, um, negative impact on the population, on the on, on just on the economy. I don't want to speak about just on the economy, but I just want to consider the social side um, and particularly the workers. So, are you recommending vaccination to employees and to to all the employers on in these cases? Yes. Yeah, so let's try to understand what why vaccination is important. So as I was explaining, when you get the SARS-CoV-2 infection, that's a lottery. You don't know what type of infection you're gonna have. You can range from asymptomatic to severe disease. If you get the severe disease, you go to the hospital. And what we have seen in the past year is that the hospital were overloaded with cases and it was very difficult to help people. So why getting a vaccination? Because with the vaccination, the likelihood that even if you get exposed to the virus that you get severe disease is very low. So that's why getting a vaccination is important. In terms of the safety measure, as we all know, there are other systems in place, wearing masks, social distancing, and those are still uh, procedure that are recommended that should be maintained until this pandemic and transmission of the virus is not over. Yeah, you, you did you you did right. I mean, you 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 was telling uh, a really important thing. Uh, maybe sometimes we are. We are just uh, we have we got we got the habits of wearing mask, no, and uh, the social distancing. I think these two kind of uh, let's say uh, attitude has should be much more um, connected to the social behavior, to the behavior of the citizens, to the behavior of the employees, to the behavior of everyone. Uh, wearing masks and social distancing. I think it's the best. I mean, I used to say it's one of the best therapy in the light of the discovery, of the recent discovery, of course, connected to the vaccination. But as per last year, I think the good, the, the, the best therapy was connected to this. Is it right? Well, the social distancing procedure and wearing the mask is what has been recommended because they show that uh, depend also what type of mask you wear, uh, some type of mask you are protecting the people around you other masks you protect both the people around you and yourself, it really depends what kind of measure you're using. But in general, that's what has been recommended worldwide. So I guess people that have experience in epidemiology, which is not exactly my field, that's what they're recommending. So that's what we're doing as well when we work in the lab. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Alba. Of course. Okay, if we don't have uh, another question. Now, the last but not least, our partner for the, this event and member of the chamber, Maria Titupopu, Managing Director of Lot Consult, one of the leading specialized companies in Bulgaria in the field of safe and healthy working conditions, offering the full range of medical and professional activities, who uh, has one of the most modern laboratory measuring equipment. Maria, please, if thank you... you. Thank you, Teddy, for the good words. Yes, uh, uh, the mission of our company is the provision of uh, all services related to the occupational health and safety. 
and in the last year this um, topic uh, became uh, very popular and very important not only in Bulgaria or in Europe but in the whole world so um, talking and thinking about the people that work and uh, that want to keep their rhythm of life and quality of work and and um, quality of life it is a very important topic how we shall continue and how we shall come back to normality and uh, what this normality will be uh, thank you for the possibility to co-organize um, this uh, wonderful event alba you are great uh, this uh, is very important event for us because um, we um, experience lack of uh, relevant and reliable uh, scientific knowledge um, here in Bulgaria, meaning that uh, all the time we listen to uh, medical, uh, political, economic, financial point of views. And I think that uh, now is the right time to concentrate on science because my belief is that science will lead, uh, will continue leading mankind ahead. And um, it becomes more and more important and we realize this in uh, the times of pandemic events. Unfortunately, we, we all experience this pandemic and um, it is very interesting to know that uh, we are on the same track, no matter if we are in Italy, in Bulgaria or in, or in the United States. So um, uh, I want to thank you uh, for, for your time. Uh, I know that it's early morning uh, for you now in uh, California, but uh, uh, here it's uh, almost spring uh, evening. And um, uh, I also thank our audience uh, for, 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 for listening to, to this uh, uh, interesting point of view, the scientific point of view of a young researcher as you are. Because although you are very experienced, you are quite young <laughs> and the future is in front of you. Uh, so um, thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, I want also to thank Rosa and uh, uh, Theodora and the Italian Chamber of Commerce for um, initiating and organizing this event. The situation in Bulgaria is very um, unpleasant from a demographic point of view. We need to keep uh, our people not only alive, but also to extend um, the period of, uh, of their active life, of being uh, um, on work experience uh, and, and working um, for a maximum period of time. So it's very important to make a good decision. And I think that uh, uh, we can't say uh, go and uh, vaccinate yourself or uh, what uh, vaccine to use. But we, our mission is to make people uh, uh, convinced that they will um, uh, choose the, the right decision. So um, our attempt is to uh, provide them with relevant information and to increase their awareness because uh, our um, decisions as um, citizens um, reflects on the public health because our field of activity is public health and uh, it's very important to emphasize the fact that what we decide um, reflects on our family, friends, colleagues and our environment. So it is very important that uh, we shared, uh, you shared with us um, uh, your approach and I wish you uh, the moment when you reach uh, and get with your uh, pool of experts and colleagues uh, from the universities, the Nobel Prize of Biology, just to remember this wonderful event. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Yes, it's very important to understand how to proceed. Of course, we have the opportunity to, to choose and uh, we have uh, still have time here in Bulgaria, but it's very important to know. When you know, you can understand what is better for you and you can decide. Uh, but knowledge is very important in this case. 
Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you again, Alba. And yes, now it's very early in the morning uh, for you. And thanks to all our speakers today and participants. And if you don't have any questions, um, I can tell you have a nice evening and follow us on our channel of the Chamber for our next events. Thank you very much to all of you and see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Alba. Grazie mille. Grazie. Grazie. Grazie, Francesco. Grazie a tutti voi. Grazie mille. Buona serata. E buona giornata oh. in California. Buona giornata. Bye, Maria. Bye. Bye.